All right, now we're ready to, to quickly finish off this, uh, this model, and we're going to create a, quickly create a recessed area underneath each of these open panels, and we're going to uh, populate those with some pipes that will base off of the actual geometry that we're pulling off of the main body, and then we'll also um, make a very quick and um, more stylized uh, tail end of the, of the engine here. So we'll move back to the body here. We will select a loop here, and then shift an up arrow to just get a larger section. We'll copy that, create a new mesh item, and this one we'll call details four. And we'll paste those polys in. Now the polygons that we want to work with are these ones that are right in the open spaces. And since we've been extracting this geometry from the underlying geometry, we are automatically going to have a very nice um, logical place to pull these from. They're going to line up relatively directly with what we're working with um, on, uh, on top. So I'm going to turn symmetry on and I'm going to start with the bevel tool and I'm going to pull down just a little bit and pull down a little bit more and then I'm actually going to expand this and I expand it quite a ways so that we get um, so that we get a wider area here. You can pull down a little bit, pull down more and and I'll pull down just a tiny bit more to, to kind of flatten off that, that edge. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and put in some pipes underneath here. So I'm going to select these polygons and those polygons. With uh, mirroring on, it's going to get all those um, just by clicking on one. And I'm going to do the same thing here on the sides, and that will automatically get the other side. So I'll copy those, and I'm going to make a new mesh item. I'm not going to, manage, uh, I'm not going to worry about renaming this because... Um, these pieces are actually going to be pasted back into that details for layer. And then I'm going to hide everything else except for these just to make it easier um, to work with since I'm since they would be hidden and obscured by a lot of the things we um, in the other layers. So I'm going to get out my um, edge tool here, select a couple of edges. Oops. Um, again, we may want to turn off symmetry here. Let's do the sides first. We will uh, go in here and I'm going to set this to uniform with the loop slice and I'm going to go up until these look relatively even and I think actually in this case uh, count of three is going to do it so I'll do the same thing over here and then we have a relatively nice uh, strip of even polygons here do the same thing here and this time I'm going to turn off symmetry do the same thing here 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 and here and while I have symmetry off, I'm going to go back to polygon mode and I'm going to get every other one here, except I want to leave the middle ones because I'm going to do a little bit wider pipe running down the middle there. So let's grab those, those, those. And then I'm just going to um, cut and paste those in and now they're, they're separated and we're getting a nice round shape. And again, that's due to the nature of these subdivision surfaces since these are just quad polys. Uh, in subdivision surfaces, they will come out as uh, relatively perfect circles. Um, only being a little bit um, a little bit wider as opposed or a little taller as opposed to wider uh, just due to the shape of the polygons underneath. You could take time to make those really balanced and, and perfectly circular, but for the purpose of what we're doing here, it's not really necessary. So now I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to select every other one, and then select every other one, cut and paste, and now we have a set of circles here. So now I'm going to use the bridge tool, and if you were if you Look over here in your item list, or excuse me, in the tool pipeline, which is under lists. If you right click on it, see I have select through enabled. That is not enabled by default. That's something you'll want to turn on here by right clicking on the bridge tool. Since I use that very often with the bridge tool, it's already on for me. And now all I have to do is if I click on one and then shift click on another, it's automatically going to bridge those. I can see, however, I have a problem. That's that those are flipped the wrong way. So I'm going to go ahead and click flip polygons, and you can see it's already um, flipped in the right direction. So I'll go along here, and I will put all of these in. Remember to shift click on the second one so that the tool picks it up. And there we go, I've got the top ones. And now we'll do the same thing over here. And since these are mirrored, this will go uh, much more quickly. And sometimes you'll hit a problem here with these, so I'm actually going to turn symmetry off here for a moment. Select those two. Select those two, and we're set. Now the other thing I want to do is I want to add just a little bit more variation to this center one. So I'm going to select a couple polys here, the loop slice. And actually, the way that this is set up um, is 
is fine for what I'm doing. Um, I'm just going to take this middle one, I'm going to bevel it, pull it out a fair amount, and I'm going to put my round level up to about 8. And then I'm going to go back to polys, select alternating ones, just like we did on those engines. And I'll do the same thing here. Select alternating ones, loop, bevel, and pull down. We'll pull. Will let me. We'll pull in a little bit. And a little bit more. Right there. And we'll go in and we'll do loop slice. This time we're going to turn it back down to two and symmetry. We'll pull those out. For that one I think I'll use 5%. We'll do the same thing here to select these top parts of this. We'll then loop and edge slice those and they've been, uh, they've been sharpened up quite a bit. Okay, now with that done I'm just going to run a quick double check and make sure that I've got everything covered here. Okay, because sometimes something will be missing, like for example this one might be missing because of a, an error in the mirroring, in which case you can very quickly go through, select all of these, um, cut them out, get all of these, and mirror them over. Which also you can do even if something isn't missing, but if something is just askew on one side or the other, um, you very quickly can fix your symmetry like that. So let's cut those out, go into our details and paste those in. We can see those lined up pretty well, so I think we are pretty much ready to go. The one thing that uh, that this has here is this rounded um, opening, and I think because of the way the, the overlying armor goes, I think I'm going to just leave that because I like the I like the way it's lining up there. And let's get back to everything except for the seam. Yeah, and I think that works for me. Um, I could take time to go in and pull this further out so that it doesn't overlap, but I think having that extra little ridge is actually uh, pretty interesting. So I'm going to leave that there. And actually, one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hide this. And I'm just going to uh, quickly select all of these guys. Um, make sure I get all of those. There we go. And I'm going to apply our alternate. Oops, looks like we missed one. We'll apply our alternate uh, darker texture to these. And I'm going to unhide everything else. And we'll show the rest of our details. And we're left now, let's hide the scene again. We're left now with only needing to build the little bottom cone on here. So let's very quickly do that. We're going to grab the, or activate the body, go up to it. Select like the bottom polygon and shift up arrow our way until we get um, I think up to there will probably, probably be adequate since uh, this the section up above us is uh, with that armor plating is already coming down to here. So I'm going to copy. Uh, I'm going to go down into this temporary mesh item that we've made here and paste that in. And then I will go in here. And again, I want to alternate with where those fins are. I'm going to select a few polygons here, a few polygons here, and a few polygons there. And bevel and pull out just a hair click there and then I'm going to activate my move tool and just pull those down okay. and then go in here and loop slice these and these I'm going to make pretty tight I'm going to pull it down to, to 1 and uh, 99 on the, on the mirrored one Oops. and something if you find this difficult to see you're using black over black there are two things that you can do we can change our wireframe to colored that helps a bit uh, but a lot of times what I like to do is turn on my reflection shading and that will uh, that will be helpful in two ways because not only will we be able to see where our where our mesh is lying but we'll also be able to see where there are um, problems in the mesh where it's not exactly um, where the polygons aren't flowing correctly and as far as this one goes actually is looking relatively clean uh, the one spot that we'll probably notice a little bit of funny things going on is this end cap because there's some uh, tight sharpened edges and even that is looking relatively okay. So I think we are good to go. Let's um, let's now change back to our uh, advanced OpenGL and I personally don't like that wireframe very often so I can turn it back to colored and 
or set, except for one thing. I want to create an alternate color here. So let's go to this layer, and I'm going to select these two small side panels, and I'm going to make um, I'm going to make those gold. So I'm going to assign this. Uh, create a new texture. Doesn't really matter the initial color that we set it to. I'll just set it to kind of a golden color there. Um, just to remind us what we're doing. And now, actually, let's click over to our render view here, and we'll see the ship here. And if we click over to our shader tree, we can look and see. We just have a basic material on there, which isn't what we want. We essentially want what ha what's on the red material, but we want that to be a golden color. So in order to do that, here let's we click on it here. We'll very quickly reveal it under here. We can see the fins really just have a material. So we can very quickly copy, go up to here, paste, and that will override uh, the the defaults except for the diffuse color. And so it's going to leave it actually having kind of a a pinkish reddish color reflection and specular highlight, which we don't want. We want those to be also kind of golden. So all we're going to do is pull those over into the into the right hue range. Make those. Might want to spend some time adjusting those and make sure that they're um, that they're what you're looking for um, in depth of reflection. And with that, we are set and ready to go. So let's put our scene back in, and we're ready to do some test renders. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. That's E S Connell E S C O N N E L L at Mac, M-A-C, dot com. Hope you enjoyed these tutorials. I sure enjoyed making them, and I'll see you soon.